Microsoft 365 Copilot is coming to you. And as it does, it's important to understand how it works under the hood. What's different about this than maybe other large language model systems that you've used like ChatGPT before. And of course, what can IT do to prepare for it? So under the surface, it may seem really simple. I have this wonderful chat-like prompting that aggregates and works in my system to provide a better experience. In that instance, you might think of it as kind of like taking ChatGPT and bringing it into Microsoft 365 or bringing Bing uh, chat or the new Bing search experience and bringing it into Microsoft 365. It's a little different though, because in both of those examples, they don't reason over your data in your organization. They don't know the connections between people and content within your organization, which is powered by the Microsoft 365 graph today. What it essentially does is when you make a request, uh, you may ask for uh, support creating a draft or you're looking for you know, a summary before a meeting. When you make that request, what it does is it goes and looks at what they call grounding. It goes and looks at the information within your organization that you have access to. So it's not grabbing information you don't have access to. It's then taking that information and passing that along to, yes, a large language model. And then it takes that information from the large language model, which then gives a response back, goes back through the graph from a grounding perspective. So it provides more enrichment, makes sure that it's tuned a little bit better for you, and then brings it back to you. So what this means is from an experience perspective, what's actually happening is one, I'm only using and reasoning over the data that I have access to via the graph and via my security. So this removes a lot of the privacy concerns or security concerns people have. The second thing that's important is that Microsoft never takes the knowledge in your graph, that's your graph, that's your organizational data. They don't take that and go, put it and upload it or share it with that large language model. They don't do that because that would be a huge danger for privacy and other reasons. Uh, it's only the request itself, which is then going to bring back key data enrichment, specifically around language uh, rationalization into your uh, graph itself, the graph knowledge that you have, etc. And then of course, Microsoft has services that make sense of that and then brings that back to you. So this uh, is an important distinction because again, that cycle that is going through each time, that's basically providing the experiences that we get, but it's based on the technology that we're already familiar with, like security controls for items and documents and sites and teams and things like that, as well as um, how we think about uh, working with our data. It's our data, it's in our tenants, it's in our services. Again, and you have all the same places like geolocation where that data resides, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you aren't familiar with things like Microsoft Loop and you saw some of these announcements, and you're like, oh, you know, there's this wonderful new uh, collaborative canvas for multiplayer by design. And that canvas, uh, if, if it's working in there, and where does that data store? Again, the way Loop works is it stores records uh, in sort of like files uh, in relation to that. So again, compliance and sensitivity and other sorts of other rules uh, over time can be applied to that content when you're ready to do those investments. Microsoft themselves are creating a number of different ways that you can administer and manage this. If they'll share more of those governance announcements soon. Uh, they right now are doing a private preview with customers, so they're learning uh, based on feedback on how to tweak and optimize some of those signals and, and things before they release it more broadly to a broader uh, pre public preview and then eventually a larger release. So so that's the first thing to note is that under, underneath all this, yes, it uses something like uh, you know, you know OpenAI or ChatGPT4, et cetera, but what it's doing with it is it's, it's um, rationalizing it with their own uh, systems, in this case, graph, as well as their own logic systems, uh, that are essentially making sense of this and, and putting this together. This is important too because, uh, well, I love those other tools that are in the marketplace. Large language models don't really understand um, the, the millions of different configurations and app signals that you can do within an app. So if you've ever used PowerPoint before, you can do all sorts of things like creating animations and transitions and you can you know retool and realign images and you can do all sorts of things within the app. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands and thousands of commands uh, that people run within these apps. Um, Microsoft is doing the hard work of taking all of those commands, rationalizing them so that when you ask for something in a, in a very simple, natural language way, that it's getting the best results or the best responses for you, or at least giving you options to regenerate it in different ways very, very quickly. And so that is the Microsoft investment. They're doing not just this response app and commands experience, but the fact that they have this um, understanding of their own tools. And you've seen uh, some suggestions of stuff like this in the past, right? PowerPoint uh, has had a design for a while.
while that's helped people kind of make better looking slides based on what you've already input. Now what you're seeing is instead of just creating better slides based on your input, they're creating um, you know the entire slide deck um, and you can more naturally interface with that. Um, and again, if you've never used it in the top of PowerPoint today, you can uh, type in natural language questions and it'll give you different app commands and things like that. It helps people find like, oh, where do I crop an image, etc. Like I'm not sure where in the ribbon, you know, that bar at the top where this command is, it helps people find that. This is basically, instead of just doing that, it's doing the action for you. Um, again, some actions you'll of course be able to tweak yourself if you wanna make minor adjustments or wanna take it further. But this idea of really accelerating the time and work that it requires is important. So this is another reason why it's really important understand Microsoft's um, uh, place within this this narrative in this journey is because they are essentially enabling a lot of those um, more effective productivity signals and opportunities because they understand those products and, and how those language models might be able to inter interact with them in creative ways. So uh, and one, one last comment on preparation. For a lot of organizations that I'm working with today, um, they are thinking about this from an IT perspective and they're saying, oh, we'll watch the roadmap when we see the announcements for it, we'll do private previews uh, in our own organization, we'll pilot it, you know, we'll go through these motions. It's really important, it's very important to understand that if you're not already doing IT motions to help people understand how to use AI tools, tools that are in the marketplace and available today, how and when they are allowed to copy content into those tools. Because if you don't know this, most of those tools allow you to upload documents and things like that so that it can reason over it and provide a more contextualized and more effective answer. If you don't already have governance and rules and guidance and mentorship and proactive digital uh, you know, excellence around that today, uh, you absolutely need to invest in there right now uh, because not only is this gonna be a more dominant thing and better in the future because it'll be part of your Microsoft uh, content. So this is much better because there's less of this content exiting the organization, right? So it's, it's better. This is gonna be much better than the way people are working today uh, because trust me, people are using these tools today. They're just you know, messaging and using these tools in probably uh, a way that IT is not really a big fan of. Uh, in this instance, now they can do those things within the organization and then you'll be able to have different types of monitoring, auditing and, and uh, support tools for it. So again, this is a good change, but IT should already be at that table. Uh, should already be an active contributor in those discussions on, on how to do those things. And if you're not, then uh, now is a wake up call to really start to, to move forward with that because you don't wanna be uh, waiting in a few months or it's gonna come very quickly when this stuff comes out. When, when it starts to be realized within the products, you don't wanna be on the back foot and uh, holding your organization back uh, because these tools change the competitive landscape considerably. Copilot is by far the most substantial change Microsoft has ever made within the way we work. Uh, and I'm really excited for how we all make the best of that and help our employees be successful.